Hey folks, hope you are all having a great day today. In this video, I want to talk about something a little different than my normal stuff, and that is a NAS server. N-A-S, meaning Network Attached Storage. And it's literally just that. It's a storage device for your network. Now, how you use that storage is dependent upon your needs. If you have a couple uh, IP cameras, then you could set up a home surveillance system. If you have a couple different devices on the network that want to watch movies, you can use something like Plex, to stream those video files to those different devices or in my case you can use it in its most simple form and that is a giant hard drive that you can access whenever and wherever so i previously purchased this particular unit it's a synology ds216j and realized that i'm going to outgrow the capacity of it relatively soon it's a two bay unit so you can have two hard drives in there and you can upgrade the size of those hard drives. However, you're still limited by the number of drives. So I wanted something, something larger that has more capacity, something that's better for me in the long run. So I contacted Synology and asked them if they would be interested in providing me one in exchange for me making a video showing you guys how much having a NAS system like one of these has really benefited my workflow. The reason I have these two out here and not plugged in with blinking lights showing you that they're working is because the location in which this will finally reside is not really friendly for a camera, let alone a camera and then someone else talking. So while I do have them side by side, I do want to make a couple comparisons. Uh, first off, there's so many different options for sizes with NAS drives. So just because you see this larger one here doesn't mean you need to spend the, large, the, the more money if it doesn't fit your needs. And just because you see this smaller one here doesn't mean that you're going to be restricted if you do need more sort storage. So take that into consideration. And then also these hold the drives in two very different ways. There's two screws on the back side of this unit that allow one of, the, one of the sides of the case to be removed and you can access the drives that way. And the drives are actually screwed into place. Now, I thought that that would be a little bit cumbersome because it's not quick access, but really how often are you going to access these drives? I haven't accessed them since I put them in there. This, on the other hand, has a little bit quicker of an access to where you can pop them out and see the drives as needed. Now, for the drives in this unit, I've got three 4 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drives. They're specifically made for a NAS box. Don't put any old hard drive in one of these systems because they're not going to last long. There's a lot of research on that, and you can uh, Google that for more information. So these are drives specifically for the NAS and the first three bays have hard drives in them leaving me with two extra bays for extra storage uh, scalable storage for down the road now these drives are or the uh, holders are pretty interesting they're they're toolless so there's two clips one on either side that just pull out and then the hard drive is free to be replaced. And they work by, instead of using screws, they have pins that clip into place where the screws would normally go. So toolless installation, which is very nice. And if you have, say, someone in the, in the house that likes to push buttons, like kids like to figure out stuff, you can also lock these into place to prevent somebody from accidentally uh, removing these from the system. So it comes with one of these keys and there's a pin down here or a lock, if I can see it the right way. And once you lock it into place, it's not going to come out. That may or may not be beneficial for you. I'm going to leave mine unlocked because I don't think anyone's going to mess with it. And then also, I, knowing me, would lose these keys. So mine will stay unlocked. But there's a very different convenience aspect as far as getting into the drives. Now, both of these are using a RAID setup from Synology that is N minus one. So however many drives you have, minus one, and that is your total capacity. So these have, this is three, four terabyte drives. So I have the capacity minus one, of eight terabytes so uh, and the reason for that is the the raid system that does that Synology has allows you to have a complete drive failure only one complete drive failure 
Uh, you can replace the drive and not lose any data. A little bit of redundancy. And I think some of these larger units have the capacity to have two drives set up for redundancy rather than just one. This one I know is just a one drive redundancy. Once you have everything plugged in physically and powered on, go to find.synology.com and run through the setup wizard. It's just a few steps and then you will find this screen. This is the DSM, Desk, uh, Disk Station Manager. And uh, this is where you will interact with the NAS as far as setting things up. So there's a couple things I wanna show you really quick. Number one, there's more items up here in the main menu and any one of these you can grab and drag to the desktop of well, it, it dragged two. I don't know why it did that. Just want one. But anyway, you can drag it to the desktop of your uh, disk station here. So in the storage manager, I'm going to click on that. And just to make sure we have three out of the five bays used. And we have a total of 7.2 terabytes of space uh, with just a little bit used for setup here. Now, there's one thing that I do want to do here. If I go to the hard disk drive tab, and up here at task scheduler, I wanna create a task, which is just a quick test of the drives, just to make sure everything is working. And I'll name this smart for a smart test and schedule it to run daily. And I'm gonna set mine at 7 a.m. due to disk hibernation. I'm gonna change the disk hibernation to four hours. And if I set this at midnight, then it's gonna wake the system up and then stay awake for four hours while it's not being used. So that doesn't make sense. 7 a.m. before I start my day and press OK. That's all I want to do in this tab. And for me, I want to go to Control Panel, change this to Advanced Mode so it gives me some more options. Let's go to Hardware and Power and change the hibernation to four hours, like I said. It's by default for 20 minutes. And I found that I need to access my files more often than 20 minutes. So the disks keep going to sleep and then you have to wait for them to um, wait for them to wake up which is kind of annoying so let's press apply and go back to the home button here and there's a lot of different things that you can uh, go through here and change uh, I do want uh, if you are going to access your your files outside the network go to quick connect and you can enable quick connect and all of your information will be here as far as how to connect to it there's other different ways to connect uh, different security settings and all that that's beyond the scope of this video but if you'd like to just have an easy access connecting to your disk station make sure that this is enabled and there's your information on how to connect to it while you are outside the network let's go down here to notification and i want to set up an email notification to let me know if something goes wrong on the system so i'll type my email address that i want to use for this particular situation and then a subject prefix on the email NAS notification my provider you can also set up notifications on SMS uh, I'm not going to do that though let's go back to home there's one thing I forgot in this hardware and power I do want to go to the general power options and say restart automatically after the after a power failure so if I'm out outside of uh, my home network, power goes out at my home network, I do want it to boot back up just like the modem for the internet. That way I can still have access to all my files uh, regardless of the, the power situation back home. I'm going to file services and I just wanna make sure that Windows file service is checked for me because I am using Windows devices. And I'm gonna uncheck enable Mac uh, file service because I don't have any Macs on my network. Next up, let's go to shared folder and I want to create a folder named NAS, NAS storage. And this is where I'm going to set all of my files, basically view this as a hard drive. I want to enable a recycle bin on it and press OK. Now the different users, I want my main default user to have read and write permissions on it. Press OK and there it is uh, i also want to create a second user so let's go back to home and press user create and name the second user j mobile and give it a password and press next 
Now, the default system group for this user is fine. You can set permissions based upon users or permissions based upon groups, which is very handy. If you have, let's say, multiple kids that you want to put into a group called kids, then you just assign group permissions rather than having to go through each individual one, uh, which is handy. So let's give read and write permissions to this NAS storage folder. Press next, press next, and uh, press... Uh, oh, we want to have the, that mobile user only be allowed to access the file station. We don't want them to be able to log into anything else and change, uh, change anything like that. So let's press next and go through there. J Mobile. Now, if I go to, um, let's go back to home and go to shared folder, go back to this NAS storage and press edit. We go to permis permissions. And J Mobile has read and write permissions. I don't want to have full read and write permissions. I want to have a custom. And what I'm going to change here is I want to remove the delete function. I don't want anybody on my mobile device to be able to delete anything off of the NAS. They can, uh, my mobile device can read the files and also write the files if I want to upload pictures. But I don't want my phone or more my laptop to be stolen and then someone be able to log in and delete all of my files that's not what I want so I'll remove those two press OK press OK and now this user changes from read and write to custom and press OK this is just a shared folder it's not necessarily all of the folders on the drive however I want to use this as my root storage folder to be viewed as a hard drive so we can go over here to file station and you'll see that this is the name of my NAS server. I named it NAS. And then also NAS storage is the name of the folder. And this is the contents, just the recycle bin. So you can access this at any time through the browser by connecting to the NAS itself. But if you want to access it through just Windows Explorer, if you are a Windows user like I am, then you'll have to map a network drive. So I go to this PC. Uh, through Windows Explorer and up here, at the, up here at the top map a network drive choose any drive letter it does not matter and the folder is backslash backslash the name of your NAS which is NAS in my case NAS backslash once again NAS storage for the name of the folder now I've already logged in once so it's not going to ask me for my login credentials but the first time for you it will uh, so press finish and for me here we go this is the folder it is a network drive uh, that can be found under this PC I've got my original NAS here that that is going to be quickly filled up and then this one right here the new one which is a lot of storage space plus room to grow but if I open that up and I let's just say add a folder it should automatically pop up over here if I refresh the disk station or the file station see there's my new folder and there it is here and if I delete this one from here it should be yeah it was just removed over there so now I have a huge storage space on the local network that I could access uh, quick, and, quick and easily on my computer but I want to show you the, another option for the mobile device, which is on my phone. There's two things that I want to accomplish with my phone. I want to be able to automatically upload all of my photos to the NAS as I take them. And then also I want to be able to view all of the files and use all of the files on the NAS, but not be able to delete anything in the event that my phone gets stolen. I've already set those permissions in the DSM. So now all I have to do is interact with it on my phone and for that, this is an Android phone, so I am using DS File app. And that means I need to log in with my Quick Connect ID, my account, and my password. And this is the JBates mobile account that I set up in the DSM. And I can press log in. So now it is logged in. I do have the folder NAS storage, and inside here is the recycle bin. So I do have access to everything that I need. Now I also want to upload photos, so I'm all, so really quick. I'm just going to add a new, create a new folder, and I'll name this one J Cell Photos. 
I've added the folder onto the NAS. Now I can go to this menu over here, down to Photo Backup, Enable Photo Backup. Uh, I previously logged in, so I'll hit Cancel to, dis to remove all that info. Now I can type in my Quick Connect ID, account, and password once more. So now these are the options for uploading photos. Where's my destination? I want that to be on the NAS storage and I want it to be in my cell phone photos folder. Press done. And I only want it to upload the specific folder on my camera. Uh, upload all existing and new photos only on Wi-Fi and only photos. I don't want it to upload large video files. Yeah, let's uncheck that. Let's upload video files as well and press done. So now it will start uploading all of my stuff and I should be able to see that in the folder on my computer. So now that it says all of my photos have been backed up, let's go to the disk station and try to delete one of them really quick. If I click on the side and then press delete, are you sure you want to delete it? Press okay. And it refreshed, but the file is still there and we should get an error message failed to delete the selected files slash folders, please make sure you have the appropriate privileges. And that's exactly what I want. If my phone gets stolen, nobody can delete anything off of my server through this connection here. Back at the disk station manager, there's something else I want to do. Let's go to package center. And the first time, let's agree to the terms of service. Uh, I want to go to backup tab over here and then install cloud sync. And what that will allow me to do is install or have my Google Drive sync to the NAS. Now, why not just use something like Google Drive to begin with for all of your storage needs? Uh, the reason is I don't want to have all of my files continuously downloading on all of my uh, all of my devices. That takes up a lot of storage space and uses a lot of bandwidth. So if I can have it in one central location then that would be great because I use Google Drive primarily for collaboration with other people. That way we could have shared folders and people can drag and drop what they need and it will automatically sync to my computer. So now that Cloud Sync is installed, let's click open and I'm going to use Google Drive. Click next. It will ask me to verify my account and all of that. So let's just press allow. Agree and connection name. Let's call this Google Drive. Select a path and create a folder inside the NAS storage named Google Drive. Press select and sync direction. We want bi-directional or uh, upload only changes or download remote changes only. I'm just going to click bi-directional because this is for uh, collaboration with other people and I want both files to sync or I want files to sync both directions you can choose data encryption if you want let's click next uh, let's sync all of my Google Drive contents press OK and you have successfully completed the setup so now it will connect to the internet and do all of my syncing for me inside that one particular folder so if I go to file station and my Google Drive, this should start to see some of the stuff populating as it downloads. And that is very, very handy for me to have this in one central location as well. I've accomplished everything that I've wanted to accomplish with this particular setup. I've got all of my files in a centralized location that I can access anywhere, anytime. That location is easily scalable. I can add space to it as needed. And then all of my mobile devices have slightly restricted permissions so that nobody can uh, accidentally or purposefully delete anything off of my NAS in the event that they fall into the wrong hands. And I have my Google Drive syncing to it as well so I don't miss any, any information and I can more easily share information across platforms very easily regardless of the device that I'm on. And I think that's it. I didn't set up a backup system for this particular unit. There are several to choose from in there, but what I'm going to do is transfer everything to the larger NAS and then use the smaller one to back up just the really important stuff I have on there, which is only uh, completed video files, website backups, um, logos, templates, stuff like that. And I'll store it at a friend or family member's house. That way in the event that there's a fire here, 
and I don't lose all of my data. I'll still have an off-site backup. So anyway, hopefully you found this information handy or somewhat interesting. And if you're interested in getting an as of your own, be sure to look into the Synology products. I'm very pleased with the one that I purchased and this new one is working out very well as well. Thanks for watching. You guys take care and have a great day.